What's up guys? So this article dropped today which has some people losing their minds over a Bluetooth vulnerability that exists on Linux and there's actually this helpful video here that demonstrates how the hack works so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So on the left here is going to be our hacker's machine and on the right is going to be our victim and you can actually see that they're running a script right here so they're just sudo exploit and then they're passing in this is going to be the Bluetooth address of the victim machine and of course that's really easy to get so the script is running here and then we're gonna see that they've got a program that just opened up here this is going to be gnome calculator you can see here on the hackers machine they've got gnome calculator running as root so this is remote code execution as root pretty much uh, as bad as things can get. You know, you've got, you've got the whole nine yards, um, remote code execution as root on the victim's machine, and the cherry on top is that this requires zero interaction from the end user. They didn't have to click on a weird link in their email. They didn't have to download a linkinpark.mp3.exe and try to run it. They didn't have to have someone from Microsoft call them and tell them they had to fix their computer. If someone is within Bluetooth range of you and your Bluetooth is enabled, you could be vulnerable to this attack on Linux. Now you may be wondering, why haven't I thrown my Linux box into the ocean and gone out and panic bought a MacBook and succumbed to the botnet? Because I don't use Bluetooth on Linux. It's as simple as that. In fact, I don't really use Bluetooth at all except for on my work laptop. Uh, and that thing has so much corporate proprietary nonsense running at it that I really don't even bother with any extra steps to secure it, all right? It's good enough by corporate standards, which isn't really good enough for me, but hey, it's it's pretty much their data. I don't care what happens to it. If someone wants to hack my work laptop and listen in on the basic meetings about JIRA tickets, be my guest. Uh, now with Linux, it's not as simple as me just turning off the Bluetooth signal either, okay? I mean, you probably could do that to sufficiently mitigate this threat if you're on Linux, um, but I don't even enable Bluetooth in my make.conf, okay? I've got this disabled, so I'm not compiling any packages with Bluetooth enabled. I've even got it disabled in my kernel, all right? So there's no, there's no Bluetooth at all on my Linux box. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I don't even have hardware support for Bluetooth because uh, I built this desktop back when, well, I was you know a lot poor. I didn't have that much money. So I know I got the motherboard that just had the limited features. It basically just had what I needed and Bluetooth uh, was not one of those things. But you know, now that I'm not broke, uh, why am I still so anti-Bluetooth? Well, first of all, Bluetooth security has always sucked. Okay, that's why just, just go ahead and search for the term Bluetooth vulnerabilities. You're going to find millions of results, dozens of CVEs, and you're gonna find them for all sorts of platforms. Okay, you're gonna find them for Windows, Linux, Apple, even BSD variants have had Bluetooth vulnerabilities. Also, Bluetooth is unironically a big tech conspiracy to get you to have less secure communications and spend more money on inferior technology. Uh, there's also the planned obsolescence that comes with Bluetooth. So the biggest culprit of this is probably Bluetooth headphones. So Bluetooth headphones are more expensive. Their proliferation is directly responsible for the death of the 3.5 millimeter jack on pretty much all phones. They don't sound as good compared to wired earbuds that cost half of the price. Uh, and this is because sending a signal over the air is generally going to be less reliable to sending it over a wire. Okay, so on a basic level, the thing that makes one recording of a song or a podcast or whatever better than the other one is how much data is contained in that, you know, three or four minute or one hour file. Okay, so that's why you'll hear audio files say that, oh, I only listen to FLAC or I only listen to WAV files and I refuse to listen to .mp3s, right? Because .mp3s, those are compressed, so there's less data inside of them. Uh, or maybe they'll refuse to listen to audio that is recorded at 16-bit, opting for something that is 24-bit or even 32-bit instead. Now, obviously, things like this might be, you know, a bit more on the extreme end, right? It's more in the audiophile space, but you don't have to be an audiophile to hear the difference between Bluetooth 
and wired, at least a decent pair of wired headphones that again, cost half as much, but certainly if you wanna go, you know, apples to apples and compare high-end wired headphones and high-end uh, wireless headphones that are in the same price range, there's absolutely no comparison. I mean, one of my favorite songs uh, to demonstrate this with is The Pot by Tool. Okay, so obviously, you know, whatever music you're going to use, there has to be uh, quite a bit to it or something to it that you you can actually really listen for. So if you listen to this with Bluetooth headphones, uh, again, even ones that are much cheaper, there's layering of the vocals that you just can't really hear with wireless headphones versus wired ones. You know, find a song that you're familiar with and do this test. But at best, wireless earbuds and wireless headphones in general are really only appropriate for travel, in my opinion, where there's going to be a lot of noise anyway from an outside source like a train or something. But for situations where you just sit in a quiet room and really just listen to some music that's you know, really high quality, Bluetooth ends up being really inferior. And there's also the issue of interference. So if you're in a crowded place like a mall or a train during rush hour where everyone is using their Bluetooth, your songs can skip, you can suffer packet loss, just like the interference that you would experience with Wi-Fi when someone is using a microwave nearby. And again, cables are nowhere near as vulnerable to this outside interference. But the worst thing of all, with Bluetooth is the batteries, which is really why I think Bluetooth is part of big tech's, you know, get rich conspiracy because you see them doing this with all devices, okay? When a device is powered by a lithium ion battery, you've got about three to five years until that battery is going to need to be replaced. And what a coincidence, virtually all wireless earbuds, headphones, laptops, and phones, at least the new ones these days, have an unreplaceable lithium ion battery. So that device ends up becoming e-waste, you're going to have to throw it away and buy a new one every few years, uh, unless it's in warranty, but of course, they always make these devices so that they're only in warranty for a couple of years or so that, you know, they sufficiently, the warranty, the warranties go to their expiration right before the battery is gonna fail. So Bluetooth headphones, those are a complete joke. Bluetooth mice and keyboards are kind of a joke too, especially if they're being used on a desktop. I mean, I can kind of understand using one with a laptop, like, you know, I do that with my work laptop too. Um, but, you know, with a desktop, what's even the point? Is it easier cable management? I mean, it's like two wires, man. How hard is that to manage? But anyway, there you go. If you're one of the few people uh, that actually uses Bluetooth on Linux, uh, you should probably stop until your distro maintainers have a fix for the vulnerability. Um, now, apparently it is fixed as of kernel version 5.10, uh, which is the latest long-term release pretty much. So you might be able to just upgrade to that in your distribution to uh, not be vulnerable to this. So if you insist on using Bluetooth after my tinfoil hat rants, just make sure that you're upgraded to that. Uh, practice good OPSEC with your Bluetooth, turn it off when you aren't using it, and make sure that you stay up to date on Bluetooth vulnerabilities because there is going to be another one.